Hi everyone, this is Amin, and in this video, I'm going to talk about multiplexing, specifically frequency type. So, buckle up. What is multiplexing? When we have different senders with a shared medium, or we have different kinds of data with a shared medium, for example, you would like to pass your data, which consists of a voice call, IoT device information, or a LAN, uh, and the medium is shared you have to multiplex them with each other there are four kinds of them the fourth one is a wdm uh, wavelength division multiplexing which is related to fiber communication but these three as you can see frequency time and code these three are the most popular and the, the scope of this video is on frequency so let's go to blackboard and uh, see uh, the concept of them this diagram is the general concept of that, but the question is how it works. The first one, let's uh, go for the time, time division multiplexing, or time division multiple access. It's like uh, an appointment in a bank that people are in a line. Each person will go at, at its own time, or you go to a specific shop and you have to use the machine to take your you know, number, for example, you are number 100, the other guy uh, who comes after is number 101, something like that. So each user has its own time to communicate. Imagine we have three users, U1, U2, and U3, and uh, like the multiplexer will say, okay, you're the first one, second one and your the third one and they will send the data like this like the first communication so you are the user one you are the user two and user three the communication is done next time again the first person who is going to send data who is going to share something is user one then user 2, then user 3, and again the same, user 1, user 2, user 3. They will always act like this, and each one will send data at, at uh, its own time. This is time division. The code division multiplexing is like setting different codes to the users. And what is the frequency? So we know, uh, and now we know the concept of that. For the frequency, each one has its own frequency to send data. For example, uh, I will say user one, sorry. User one at frequency one. User two at frequency two. And finally, user three frequency tree so if each one they send data to a multiplexer the last data it will be like this like f1 or user1 f2 or F3 for U1, U2, U3. So they will send the data like this. It is the concept of frequency division multiplexing. Okay, cool. Now we know the concept of frequency division multiplexing. However, we should be cautious about something that uh, is very important. In order not to have uh, interference for adjacent channels, I mean, so in order to prevent ACI, adjacent channel interference, this multiplexing does require these guard bands, as we can see here and here. So these guard bands are not to let those uh, adjacent channel have overlap. And this thing will cause being uh, bandwidth inefficient. I mean, uh, lots of bandwidth will be wasted due to that those garb bands. What is the solution of that? Using subcarriers which are orthogonal to each other. And uh, it's weird. What does it mean? How to be or orthogonal? And what does this orthogonality mean? Let's go to Blackboard and uh, see the diagrams. O F. DM, which stands for 
orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So to have a good understanding, a good visualization of that concept, what do we need? We do need axis like this. And let's consider this point like a pitch point. And a broken line like this. And this is the first sync function that I'm gonna just draw. Drawing is not very good, sorry for that. This is the first pitch. My second one, I mean the second, I'm going to show you the concept of orthogonality. Uh, the second uh, pitch will be like this, or second sync function. And the third one, I'm going to choose green color for that let's choose this space between them and cool can draw another one but maybe it's unnecessary anyway let me do that Okay, cool. This is the concept of, uh, this is the actually the visualization of that. And what is orthogonality here? If we take a look at this, we'll see whenever or wherever one of them, for example, this one, uh, at its own peak, the rest of them are zero. And this is the thing. Whenever each one uh, reaches its own peak, like here, 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 here. If we take a look at here, I mean, closely, we look at that. When someone reaches, I mean, some of them reaches its own peak, rest of them are zero. Or we arrange them in a way that uh, when one of them reaches the most, uh, actually the peak, or the highest number, it should be the time that the rest of them should be at the lowest point, which is zero. So in this way, they will be orthogonal. And orthogonality concept of OFDM is what you can see here. Okay, now we have better understanding of that uh, diagram. And uh, we can say OFDM is way more bandwidth efficient in comparison with FDM due to the orthogonality and now we know the concept of uh, being orthogonal but what is the drawback of OFDM in OFDM each user uh, like a, a subcarrier will be assigned to each user for indefinite time period which is not good I mean we need something to have a set of subcarriers that can uh, dynamically assign uh, to the users and uh, the users can like simultaneously use them. This is the thing. And this is the concept of OFDM, a orthogonal frequency division multiple axis. This is the concept of that. And what is the usage of OFDMA? You know, in uh, mobile communication, OFDM is very popular, very common in uh, Wi-Fi usage, but uh, OFDMA is in 4G or LT communication. Uh, when uh, in the downlink from BTS, actually it's not BTS in 4G, it's uh, E not B, but we call it base station. From base station to UE or to the cell phone, uh, we use OFDMA in that communication. And the thing is that it needs, uh, even though it's uh, very bandwidth efficient, but it needs a lot of, uh, you know, power. As long as a base station is using AC power from the city, so it's not a big deal for that. However, that uh, amount of battery, uh, actually, it's not good for the UE and UE will consume a lot of battery to actually have that power to send the data. For that reason, actually, uh, SCFDMA, single carry is the thing uh, UE or U uh, cell phones will use to communicate to base station as uplink. 
how it works in OFDMA, we have, uh, for example, X1, X2, user1, user2, and S1, S2, uh, subcarrier1, subcarrier2. And they will assign to each other and send data. In SCFDMA, single carrier, we use a uh, summation of S1 and S2 and the difference of them. In this way, it will be power efficient. Okay, cool. Let's uh, sum up. We know about FDM, which is the basic uh, frequency multiplexing, and then OFDM, which is very common in Wi-Fi, and we know about orthogonality, how it works, and what is the concept of that, and also OFDMA and SCFDMA in uh, mobile communications and uh, in uh, LTE. Cool. I, I think I, I, I've covered whatever that I wanted to tell you. I hope you enjoyed. I hope uh, you found that useful. If you enjoyed that, just show me a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.